in Las Vegas at Dan's Driveline. They're our choice at Strange Motion for drive shafts. And uh, we're going to go in and give you a little tour, give you a couple tech tips. I think we're going to film a couple videos while we're here. So come inside and we'll talk to Brick. So here we are. We're inside the Dan's Driveline shop. This is Brick Casper right here. How you doing, Brick? Good, Tim. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Uh, we've known each other for quite a few years. We've been doing our drive shafts at the shop and actually did some for a TV show for us too. Right. And uh, so okay. he's going to give us some technical advice. This was actually Brick's idea to why we were out here in Las Vegas to come by and film. We're going to talk about some drive shaft stuff. I think you got some ideas about angles and stuff like that too to talk about. Yeah. First of all, I appreciate the opportunity to build some stuff for you and get to meet some good guys. Uh, uh, you introduced me to Chad uh, working on his wagon. Yep. And yep. Uh, that's that was really rewarding to do that um, was proud to be part of that and uh, in a small way and then you know through that some other folks and I'm glad we could help you out so you know whatever we can do here to talk uh, talk some people through making right choices and kind of knowing a little bit more than hey I just got to connect a differential to a to a transmission and uh, hopefully we can figure some of that out and answer some questions okay all right sounds good cool all right when the when you're trying to identify a U joint to measure for a drive shaft there's only there's only a couple things you need to know. One is the transmission you're running, uh, and we have we have slip yokes listed for the different types of transmissions. The other is the pinion yoke, and uh, as far as pinion yokes go, there's a couple different styles. Usually they're identified by the uh, U-joint, the lockup series of the U-joint, and the cap diameter. This one is a Chrysler version, which is an inside lockup. It's it's identified by not having any anything on the outside of the U-joint to center it. Every joint has to have a means to center it from side to side. This one has a milled surface for a clip in the cap and doesn't have anything for uh, to center the joint from side to side. I'll grab another example here in a second and uh, show you an outside lockup version. This is a Ford 9-inch, 1350 style. You can see it has tabs on either end. The, that's what's referred to as a lock, uh, outside lockup. So the last thing after you identify the type of uh, lockup it is, whether it's going to be outside like this or inside like that, you want to measure the uh, the cap diameter. If you have a U-joint that fits, that's easy enough by just measuring across the top of the cap. If you don't, you have to measure the yoke, and you're looking for the, uh, the widest portion of this before it comes to the chamfer, and that's going to correspond to the... Uh, to the U-joint cap dimension. So you can identify that. This 1350 measures at a 1.188 cap, which is neither here nor there. And then in between the two lockup surfaces, you need to measure that. So if it's outside lockup, you'd measure to the inside of those tabs. If it's an inside lockup, you'd measure to the inside uh, where the, the clips on an inside lockup measure to. So once you've determined cap diameter and lockup dimension from that, the uh, driveline shop or, or parts house should be able to identify which U joint series you need for the uh, rear portion of the drive shaft. And I always say it at my shop that there's a lot of things that you don't want to skimp on, and a drive shaft is just that. This is why we're here at Dan's Driveline because they build all of our custom shafts. Yeah, you can spend days and days and go to the junkyard and finding pieces and parts and all kinds of stuff, and it's probably going to work for a little while, but not in the long run. So Brick's going to also tell us they build custom shafts here, too, on how to measure them. And then we're going to go back in the shop and see how they're actually made. Just so happen to have one of the shafts we just recently finished here. And uh, going over some of the stuff we talked about is identifying U-joints. Um, this, is, this is a good example of one that's going to have a Ford uh, differential and a GM transmission. But we were able to do that with two different weld yokes. So we've got a Spicer seal lifetime type inside lockup. 3R GM U-joint in the front and a, and a Ford style U-joint in the rear, but didn't have to use a conversion joint. We combined that with uh, with all Spicer weld yokes, DOM tubing. This one was made in a, a 3 inch 083 wall thickness. And uh, this is good in most street applications, probably up to about 400 horsepower or more, uh, depending on what you're doing. Stuff that's real hard on U-joints is, uh, you know, we, we typically will ask the customer what the intended usage is. and if it's a drag race only, something with a trans brake or a slick tire or nitrous, those things add more shock load to all your drivetrain components, including the drive line. So uh, we can beef them up from that. Ideally, you would put as large and as light a drive line in a vehicle as you could you could muster. And uh, for most stuff that's 
50 inches or so around from center to center. A three inch OEV3 shaft is pretty good. If you can get a three and a half inch shaft, that's even better. Um, another nice upgrade is to do an aluminum shaft, which we do here. They, uh, they do the same job. They drop a little bit of weight. The only disadvantage is they cost about $100 more for a, for a hot rod style uh, drive shaft. We do them in some of the bigger diesel trucks. Um, they go up to a five inch diameter nose to, so that they stay straight at speed and uh, can carry the torque load that a diesel puts out. Uh, those are a little bit more expensive, but a lot of times to build a custom one piece shaft and all spicer components, including the slip yoke, you're between three and $400. And, uh, and the turnaround time, at least here is 24 to 48 hours. A strange motion shop. Pretty much the only thing I've ever done with you and when we was doing the TV show was hot rod, two wheel drive stuff, some low horsepower driver, and some higher horsepower stuff. But tell us about it. You do pretty much everything here, street cars and everything too, right? Right. Um, yeah, the, the, the bulk of our work is, is stuff like you've done, the bread and butter, daily driver, and hot rod stuff. But we can build anything and everything. Like I mentioned, the, the aluminum shafts, um, some of the new Dodge diesel trucks, they have a little bit of an issue with their two-piece steel drive shaft design with a carrier bearing. We're able to remove that, build the aluminum one piece, drops a significant amount of weight, eliminates a center bearing that's a potential failure point. But we, we do stuff from big diesel trucks to PTO shafts, which would be something like on the farm that we drive an implement off of a tractor. Um, you know, if you're here in Las Vegas, and you probably went past New York, New York, uh, down the strip. Yeah. Dan's drive lines are turning the wheels that drive the uh, the cars up the roller coaster. The oh, door really? Yep. That's pretty cool. Um, one of the rides at the Circus Circus Adventure Dome has got our stuff in it. Um, semi's going down the truck, every uh, going down the track or the freeway out at the Las Vegas Strip. We've got quite a few race cars. Um, for the last few years, we've been supplying uh, new new drive shafts to Jemco. It's a trophy truck builder out of San Diego, and uh, you name it. You know, if, it, if it's a drive line and it spins, we can build it, balance it, and ship it. Yeah, that's what some people get scared of just because they live in Las Vegas and I'm in Tennessee and he ships them to me no problem. So, you know, being local, you don't have to be. They can fill out the forms. You can call them anything and then they'll ship it to you. Now, I realize not every every community is not necessarily going to have a driveline shop. Um, right. uh, so whether you're in Tennessee or a rural portion of Montana or just down the road, you know, we can take care of whether we have to ship it or you can come walk through the door. So most of that stuff. I like to get it right the very first time, so there may be some calls and emails back and forth to, to make sure we're talking apples to apples, but uh, usually we get that stuff sorted out, so it's a one-time one issue. Okay, let's head out in the shop. All right, got some more stuff.